coming up next on the Believer's Walk of Faith. God is looking at your heart. He is seeing what you really got, you see? And when you break out of that thing and get His priority, your priority, His priority is to feed the poor. It's to recover the lost. It's to go to visit the prison. It's to provide clothing for thee. That's His priority. When that starts coming through your heart, watch your money start multiplying. Welcome to the Believer's Walk of Faith. Empowering believers through teaching, preaching, and demonstration of the uncompromised Word of God to fulfill their highest calling and change this world through Jesus Christ. To glorify God in all we do. To train up and send out believers. To cover the whole earth with the knowledge of the Lord. Welcome to the Believer's Walk of Faith. Matthew chapter 6, and he says here in verse 19, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust has corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust has corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So you, he's talking here about treasure, meaning valuables of your life, meaning could be money. But where those things are, that your heart will be there also. And it's, it's amazing where your treasure, your valuables are. Your heart will be there also. Now, if, if your value is in money, then your heart is going to be on your money. And wherever your money goes, that's where your heart's going to be. But if your value is in God, then your heart's going to be in God. And you'll be surprised. Um, money is not used to taking second place for the most part. Money, money is something that is ever increasingly on folks' minds. It's how I can get some money. And over here, in verse 24, he said, No man can serve two masters. Either you'll hate one or love the other, else you'll hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is money or a God of money. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, or for your body or what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold, the fowls of the air... For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they are? So he's talking about those things that money can buy. And he said, don't take any anxious thought about those things. Now, let me share with you why I'm bringing this up. Because a lot of God's people have not been experiencing the increase in their lives, and they have not been experiencing the increase in their lives because they haven't had what I call covenant alignment. Let's go over here, please, to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. And while, you, while you're doing that, if you put something in Genesis chapter 12, let's also look at Isaiah 51. All right, Isaiah 51, look what it says. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewed, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto who? Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah that bare you, for I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. Now, he's telling us to look to Abraham to see how Abraham got to where he got to. Verse 3, For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Now, that's what we're after here, making the ruined places of this earth like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. 
All right, so he's saying, look to Abraham, to see how Abraham got there. So we're going back to Genesis chapter 12, because I said the reason why people have not been experiencing this increase that God has for their lives is because they have not been in covenant alignment. Let's go over here to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1. Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee. Now what he's doing now is unhooking Abraham or Abram from the system that he trusted in. And I will be, make, thee, make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee I will curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now, if you'll notice here, a lot of this emphasis here is put on not only blessing Abram, but also for him to what? To be a blessing. And this is kind of interesting because this whole idea of being a blessing, um, it determines the level of blessing that God can entrust us with. So we have got to make up in our mind that we are going to be a blessing, that not only are we going to be blessed, but God will be able to get the blessing through you so that he can serve humanity. And this, I don't think that, that it, it, it's interesting how we say, well, if he, when, my, when my ship comes in, I'm going to bless somebody. Well, you can start where you are. You don't need to start with a million dollars. You can start with one dollar. But the idea about it is God looks on the heart. And in that heart here, there is where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Glory to God. I want y'all to get this. I'm going to try to put this thing out here. Let's go back to, I should have had you see there. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 6, please. He said this, where your treasure is, verse 21, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye, and if therefore the eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. Okay? Now, what does that mean? That there, those two verses are right next door to each other and saying that, hey, when, when you have the right motives, you'll see the scriptures clearly. Amen. See, the heart has a lot to do with how far you go. And see, the, the, that's why he said, you'll know a tree by its fruit. Didn't he say that? Yeah. So if I look at the fruit and the fruit of apple, what kind of tree is it? Is an apple tree. See, it doesn't fool you. You can't tell me you love God and certain things be happening in your life. Now, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I, I got to see that there is a, there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect. And, and when, when that heart is, is for God, you will see that things, um, things in the scriptures, and you'll see them, and you'll be able to act on those things, and the fruit of those things be in your life. Are you following what I'm saying? Um, I was teaching on Wednesday night here, and I was teaching on love and mar uh, marriage and the family, and I was talking about loving God. Loving God. One of the biggest problems that I have when people come into the office and they want counsel and so forth, a couple, and, and, and I tell them what the scriptures say, but they don't want to do that. But the Bible says, he that loveth me keepeth my commandments. See? And they don't want to do that. So it's amazing how people claim they love God, but they don't want to do what he says. Well, they don't love God. I'm going to tell you who they love. They love themselves. They love themselves. And what happens is they put themselves and what they think over what God thinks, even though God created them. And he knows the best thing to do for them in this, in this last hour. He knows exactly what path to lead them down, but they don't want to follow that. And, and I'm just saying here that uh, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Oh, Jesus. 
Let, let's go somewhere. All right, let's go over to Matthew chapter 25, please. Matthew chapter 25. Verse 14 is where I'll start. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And in one he gave five talents to another two, another one. Every man, according to his several abilities, straightway took his journey. And then he had, they had received one talent, or pardon me, five talents, went and traded the same and uh, made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, and he gained another two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that received five talents came brought, and the Lord uh, uh, brought other ta uh, five talents, saying, the Lord, you have delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Now, this, he called him two things. He called him faithful, and that was a person that's loyal, a person that is here adhering to duty, even when nobody's around, and it's also a person who is obedient, faithful. Good means profitable. Now you might want to put this in your Bible, because they just didn't have to be faithful. They had to be good and faithful. And verse 25 says, and he was afraid, and, and I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth, and lo, there thou hast that is thine. And the Lord uh, came to him and said, thou wicked and slothful servant. It's interesting how people can have billions of dollars and a person keep that wealth in a private bank offshore. When that person could take one of those billions and bring it into a community and eradicate poverty, can take that money and create jobs move a factory in that community, create jobs, educate folks who can't read, all kinds of things. But they won't do that because they're wicked. Now, here was a person who was a servant, meaning a covenant person. And when that covenant person would not trade, would not gain increase, he still call him wicked. And it's amazing how many people that are covenant people that can still do something to help people won't do it. And I'm going to tell you that what is happening is he took that from him and he gave it to the one who was willing to trade and was making the greatest impact in this earth. And I believe that's what's about to happen. You're about to see folks who are saved get stripped because they are not participating in the advancing of the kingdom of God. And the reason why they got blessed is to be a blessing. And to whom much is given, come on now, much shall be required. And this is a time we're coming into. Come on over to one more place. Come on to Luke chapter 12, please. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. See, only by being a blessing do you qualify for a continuous flow of blessings. Well, I don't have nothing. Yes, you do. You got clothes you ain't worn in three years, four years, five years. So you got something right there. 
Uh, are you following what I'm saying? See, you, you, you're, you're trying to disqualify yourself, but you, you're, uh, you're in the game. You're in the game. And the reason why you're not increasing because you're not using what you have to bless somebody. See, you're not starting where you are. You're trying to get this million dollars before you tip the Lord. <laughs> Say amen to this. And look what it says here in Luke chapter 12. Have you got it? Verse 13, and one of, one of the company said unto him, Master, speak unto my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me, me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And who, who do you think caused the ground to bring forth? God did. See, see, um, Peter Daniels, when he was speaking here, uh, and, and it was, as we got it on videotape, and he was speaking, Peter Daniels is a, is a multimillionaire, he's a king, and a multimillionaire from Australia. And he comes and speaks, and he doesn't charge anything for it. He doesn't let you pay him anything or receive anything. Why? Because he's got a, uh, this thing, thing in, his, in his heart that he wants to see how much money he can give away before he passes and leaves this lifetime. And, and so he's a multimillionaire, and now he did all this through giving and, and loves the Lord. So he has never gone through formal schooling. Never taught himself everything. He's spoken at some of the finest universities. I'm just letting you know what you can do independent of this system that's out here. And so what happened? Now, I'm not talking against education. I'm just letting you know what you can do. So he said that, that when they win a battle in the olden days in, in Rome, would win a battle and so forth, they'd come back to Rome and they'd bring all the spoil. He'd have first the general and then have behind him his armies, and then have behind him the, the captives that had been taken in chains, and then have behind him you had the spoil and the oxen and all the things, the riches and gold and all that and so forth. But at a certain point in that parade, there would be one that would jump up on the chariot with the general. And he would jump up on the chariot and begin to whisper in his ear that glory is ever fleeting. Glory is ever fleeting. Something like that. What he's trying to tell him, don't get, don't get to smelling yourself because what's glorious today won't be glorious tomorrow. You got what I'm saying? And it's, it's, it's very interesting about how people start making money and all of a sudden they can't tithe anymore. All of a sudden they can't. If you go through, I don't have time for it this time, but you go to Abraham, the enemy was after Abraham's integrity. If you go to Isaac, he was after his integrity. If you go to Jacob, he was after his integrity. Jacob even told Laban, said, listen, even when you left me out there with the sheep, he said, when a lamb, uh, a lion came and grabbed one of the sheep, he said, I would take it myself. I wouldn't even tell you about it. I would take it myself so that I can always provide you with what you gave me stewardship over. How about jo Joseph? Joseph was minding his own business, taking care of the money for Potiphar, and here comes Potiphar's wife. Notice he was after his integrity. What are you going to do when nobody's looking? And I'm saying, what are you doing with the tithe? What are you doing with your offering? What are you doing with your giving? What are you doing when nobody's looking? Because God is looking. And I'm telling you, you can't get pears on an on a, on a apple tree. I'm saying when you don't see no income, Increase, it's a reason why. And the reason why I'm telling you is because of covenant alignment. And people are not lined up. You, you saying all the hallelujahs, doing all these religious things, but there's something missing. There's something wrong in the heart. And when something is wrong in the heart, you can't, God works through the heart. He don't work through your outside. I know we, we act like we got all this Holy Ghost, but God is looking at your heart. He is seeing what you really got, you see? And when you break out of that thing and get his priority, your priority, his priority is to feed the poor. It's to recover the lost. It's to go to visit the prison. It's to provide clothing for thee. That's his priority. When that starts coming through your heart, watch your money start multiplying. 
I'm telling you, folks, even when we didn't have nothing, we tithed. Even when we didn't have nothing, we tried to give some groceries to somebody. That's my wife. I'm just telling you right now, if you get that kind of heart, you'll go up in wealth that nobody can count the amount of wealth that you've got. But other than that, you'll be counted wicked, and he can't trust you with anything because you never pass the money test. But I got a feeling that you about to get in line with the kingdom of God. And when you get in line, you're going to see God's revenues come in your life like never before. Let me just read this. Praise God. Look what it says here. And he says, verse 17, and he thought within himself saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, this will I do. I'll pull down my barns and build greater barns. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say unto my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat and drink and be merry. He's talking to himself. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night your soul shall be required of you. Then who shall those things be which you have provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not what? Rich toward God. This man thought he had it made. And that's what deception of money. It'll make you think you got it made. Now, I know this man might have died. I don't think he died. I think he lost his mind. I think he went crazy. Deceitfulness of riches. Life is more than the abundance of things. God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be comfortable. But don't forget about his mission. Remember, it's always God first. Hello, this is Bill Winston. I want to thank my partners and those who have made contribution and those who have prayed for us for all that you've done for Bill Winston Ministries. You see, it's through your giving, it's through your loving support that we're able to do all the things that we have done. We came here with $200, my family and my wife, I tell you. We came here and, and a dear sister put us up in our home because God just told us to come. And she opened a home to us that God told us to keep us and keep us until, you know, we got the ministry started. We started a little storefront church there on the west side of Chicago. Didn't have much at all, but we kept sowing, kept sowing, kept sowing and kept reaping. Praise God. God kept increasing us more and more. In the book of Job, he said, though your beginning be small, your latter end shall greatly increase. You see, if you're willing and obedient, it says, you'll eat the good of the land. So we were willing and we were obedient, just doing what God said. And look how he grew the ministry and grew it. And next thing you know, we bought a shopping mall and then we built a new facility and people are coming from everywhere. And now we've been going to the nations of the earth. We're going out to the different nations. We're going to India where we have churches there and people are being born again and saved and miracles are taking place. We're going into Africa and different in South Africa and different parts of the continent of Africa, just bringing the word of God. People's lives are being changed, I mean, forever. Also in some of the uh, nations in the Caribbean and also Central America, we're going. And also in Brazil, where not only uh, are we going and preaching the word, but have brought up a business school, a Christian business school called the Joseph Business School in Brazil and some of the other nations. These are things that are happening. And the reason why they're able to happen is because of your support. It's because of people like you who have said, I believe in the vision that God has given this man of God and I want to support it. Well, because of that, in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, the Apostle Paul said this, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You see, it's because you've helped me, I can help other people. And that's the way it's supposed to work. Pretty soon they grow up and they can help other people. And God wants us to take this and the love of God throughout the whole nations of the earth. So I want to say, first of all, thank you partners. Thank you for being faithful and helping me take the gospel to the nations. I want to appeal to anybody else. If you see that you've been watching our broadcast and you've been enjoying it, perhaps God is hooking us up together. I'm not trying to take you away from your local church. I'm just saying that if God is hooking us up together and ask you to give something to help support this gospel going to the nations, 
I just ask you to help me. Obey God and guaranteed he'll meet all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. This is Bill Winston. I love you. Keep walking by faith. Help us fulfill the Great Commission by partnering with us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. To become a partner today, simply go online to www.billwinston.org and click on Become a Partner. Your giving to Bill Winston Ministries helps us take the gospel to your local communities and to the nations of the world. When you sow your financial seed today, know that every soul saved, every life transformed, and every family restored is accredited to your account. To become a partner or to sow a financial seed today, go online to www.billwinston.org. You can also write to us at Bill Winston Ministries, P.O. Box 947, Oak Park, Illinois, 60303. Or call us at 1-800-711-9327. Thank you, partners, for helping us transform this world through the love of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of this world buys and sells. The kingdom of God sows and reaps. In order for you to flow in the system of sowing and reaping, you're going to have to walk with integrity. Integrity is like the foundation of one of those huge high-rises downtown Chicago. Integrity is that which you can't see underground that's causing that which you can see to stand upright. So integrity is inside of us. It's something that causes us to resist things that we shouldn't take part in, even though nobody else is watching. Discover how integrity will get the blessing flowing in your life with Dr. Bill Winston's teaching, Where Your Treasure Is, Having Integrity in the Kingdom of God. In this three-part series, Dr. Winston explains how integrity will connect you to the blessing, how integrity will keep you faithful to God's Word, how integrity guarantees success in life, and so much more. Integrity is not a, a option. Integrity is a mandate. That's what happens to people. They don't have any integrity, and they get raised up off of their skill, but God doesn't promote on skill. He's got to have some integrity with that. To order your copy of Where Your Treasure Is, Having Integrity in the Kingdom of God, simply write to Bill Winston Ministries, P.O. Box 947, Oak Park, Illinois, 60303 by bank card at 1-800-711-9327 or online at www.billwinston.org. Prosperity, the kingdom of God, and victorious living belong to you. Learn to possess them with integrity. Order your copy of Where Your Treasure Is, Having Integrity in the Kingdom of God Today. Pastor Bill Winston personally invites you to Living Word Christian Center, located at 7600 West Roosevelt Road in Forest Park, Illinois. Our Sunday services are at 7, 9, or 11, 15 a.m. with a midweek Bible study Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. For more information, please call 708-697-5000. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers.